The president earlier said that, of course, people must not sell their land. They must hang on to their land. But there are talks of expropriating land without compensation. That's gaining momentum. But there's no synergy among those who are raising the issues. The president and other political formations, such as the EFF, recently emphasized the need for this to be expedited. That's the land issue. There's also general agreement that black communities continue to languish in poverty, while descendants of those who were dispossessed and the ancestors of the land, they benefit from the riches. Black first, land first. Lindsay Marstorp now joins us uh, to extend the conversation. Mr. Marstorp, a very good morning to you and welcome. Good morning and thanks for having me. Now, I, I don't know if you followed, but the Board of Afrikaner Volksraad earlier when we spoke to them says that uh, when uh, white people, uh, when, white, when, when, when black people are saying that white people took their land, that is complete nonsense. I would like to get your thoughts on that. Well, we know white arrogance has its way of just perpetuating itself through society. It's a historical fact that white people arrived here. In fact, the first resistor was Ocho Moto, who, was, who resisted, one of the uh, Khoisan leaders at the time. And we know his fate. Um, it's important to know that white people and persons like Breitenbach are land thieves, and they have no stake to the society. And the black majority understands that, and we will respond accordingly um, in a way that ensures that we take back land. Important to note, too, that when he talks about war, he has no understanding of the black lived experience. Um, just Saturday past, one of our comrades, uh, Comrade Pumza, was killed in Nyanga East. Um, today, this morning, actually, eight students are in court because the, from Philippi High School because they wanted better education. We understand the war that is waged because of our landless situation. Biko, in fact, tells us that the construction of township ensures that achieving adulthood is near impossible. So when Mr. Breitenbach talks about war, our perpetual existence as black people is within war that is being waged against us. What we say as black first, land first, is we must unite. All political movements, all black people must come together, understanding that we have been dispossessed, oppressed, and left landless. We must call for an imbizo, a land imbizo, and we must come together. And principally, we must take back the land. Mm -hmm. Practically, we must ensure that black people's land gets returned to the black majority. So, so your policy is then that land should be expropriated without land as, uh, with, without compensation as well? Definitely, definitely. We cannot pay for something that is stolen. I, I mean, if, if, if you steal somebody's car, how is it that you then expect that person to buy it back from, from the person who has stolen it? It just doesn't make any logical sense. Uh, it's, it's, it's obvious, it's common sense that the land that was stolen cannot be bought back. In fact, it would be a crime if it is bought back. It is a crime that is being bought back. But also, we must understand that it will take another 100, 100 years to get 30% of the land. It has taken too long to buy back the stolen land. It is wrong and unethical. And black people have come together now and, and realized that it is wrong. How we unite now and principally take back the land is, is the question that we pose. Uh, and we as BLF, we, we, we think, and it's time that we meet and continue to foster peace amongst blacks and, and wage war against the enemy who has stolen the land from the black majority. Now, we know that government is busy with laws and policies to enable the speedy land reform, including land expropriation without compensation, as provided for in the Constitution. So there's a constitutional means to that. But do you think that these goals will be achieved overnight? Because it has taken us 23 years as we stand, and the land question has not been resolved as yet. Look, there's no other way to take back the land but through black unity. But let, let us just assess the, what, what has been happening in Parliament. We know that... Unfortunately, the land card is being paid by certain political parties and some who are aligned to, to, to white interests like Rupert and Renwich abroad. But as Black First Land, which we constantly say, whatever people's reason is for saying they'll give 6% so that we can take back the land, we agree that we must come together to take back the land. But also further than that, we must move from a radical rhetoric about land to practical implementation of taking back the land. We know that the expropriation bill that was penned by Cronin um, one who would say that he was working in the best interests of, of black people, but which we know mimicked the Freedom Charter days when white people penned that document and sold us a myth of, of freedom for black people. So what we are saying is that 
when that bill appeared, what we, we, we asked President Jacob Zuma to return that bill back to Parliament and ensure that we have a new dialogue on that. I want to categorically state too, when we ask for a new dialogue on land expropriation without co compensation, we cannot invite white colonial land thieves to the table of that discussion. So we absolutely reject Mr. Breitenbach's notion that we must sit with him at a table and discuss with those who have stolen our land what is to be done. So PLF's position is that we will continue to, to, to work with those in Parliament and speak to those who can push for a radical uh, change of the policy so that it can indicate land return without compensation. But at the same time, we'll continue with our land petition to mobilize and ask a poll, a, a national poll of should black people buy back the stolen land? And we must say it's been a resounding response from all political formations, all black people to say that it is impossible that black people should buy back stolen land. But we will also continue our program of actually uh, targeting white owned you in use land, the land that is owned by people like Johan Rupert, and finding out and doing our research and, and, and even taking those land, as we have seen in Mamalodi and in other parts of the country as well. So we'll do, use all means to take back land, but principally, black people must now come together. We must put away our political and, and uh, all these petty differences and ideologically understand white people came and they were united in stealing our land. They divided it fairly amongst themselves, near the British and the Dutch. And so we cannot now be divided in our quest for land. We must take back the land. And when we say land, we mean the land and everything that is under the soil, on top of the soil, even the, the air that we breathe. Everything must belong to black people. And we must ensure that we can mm -hmm. destroy corruption, we can destroy uh, landlessness in particular, and then we can also give people free decolonized education. And most importantly, dignity to black people. Mr. Masdorf, we are being continuously being told that if the land is being taken without compensation, that will end up like Zimbabwe. Your thoughts on that? Because it seems like that's what uh, the Afrikaner uh, uh, Volksrat is driving to. Well, that, that the fears around Zimbabwe is simply because black people actually have land. White people don't want black people to have land. That is the fear. The fear is nothing more and nothing less. Of course, we know the Zimbabwean situation. There's three things that we could say on that. The one is that economic sanctions, the oppression of black people have rightfully taken back what is theirs, maintains itself at the international level. And so then the, the economic sanctions plays its part. We know that the drought, unfortunately, played its part in Zimbabwe. But we also know that the resilience and the partnership with countries from abroad bro uh, economically to defend the currency, but also to, to ensure that black people are able to farm again and to grow the economy, the, the land economy, uh, means that black people actually have the destiny in their own hands. So if it means we become like Zimbabwe, at least then black people will have a say. We know right now black people remain landless. We remain in the pockets of white monopoly capital because we have to eat their food, their GMO food that kills us and destroys us and gives us diseases like cancer. We can no longer be subject to white power that oppresses us. We must take the power and we must decide how we will live and in what way we can make ourselves go forward. So if, if Zimbabwe is, is, the, is, the, is the bar for how we will go, then great. That is a, a, an advancement of, what, of the indignity that we suffer daily as black people. We are asking our viewers today uh, about whether or not we can afford to take the land without compensation. Finally, your thoughts on that. We can't afford not to take back the land, and we can't afford to pay for the land. The land was stolen. The black majority must come together. We as BLF, we must, I think now, it's, we must propose that black people from all movements and, and political organizations come together and have an imbiza of some sort on land and discuss it and, and, and go forward and actually uh, make a call, a genuine call, not only to the black majority, but also uh, a call that is in action that takes us forward and takes back the land for the black majority so that we can all have dignity. Mr. Mastov, I thank you so much for your time joining us there in our Cape Town studio.